Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and I am here with Tom. Say hello, Tom. Hello, Gina. Ooh. Gina. I just got a notification that we are now live on my phone. Sorry about that. Welcome, everyone. It I'll is great to see you. How are you, Tom? I'm well, thank you. Great to see you. Oh, I'm a little bit too close tonight in the monitor. Let me back up just a little bit. There we go. <laughs> well, tonight we are going to have a lot of fun. We are going to play a little bit with Copic markers. Now, I have to make a disclaimer right off the bat. Disclaimer right off the bat. Tonight, I'm going to show you a way to use Copic markers. I'm not going to teach you how to use Copic markers. I'm going to teach you a way to use Copic markers. Nobody's going to walk out of here tonight as a Copic market marker expert because you're not being taught by one. But I have a fun way to use them. And I'm going to explain a little bit about the differences between the three different types of Copic markers and maybe give you a little bit of insight into why I picked the ones that I picked. So, um, did yeah. you consult a lawyer for that disclaimer? Or? <laughs> I definitely needed a disclaimer tonight because I think people think they're going to learn how to be Copic markers experts, and that's kind of hard when the person teaching you is not. Get it? Somebody said we're freezing on Facebook. We're freezing everywhere, but. <laughs> oh, no. I hope it's not freezing on Facebook. I don't, it okay, shouldn't I'm, be. It okay, should be on YouTube right now. Okay. All right. Well, maybe. Uh, um, maybe, Fee, if you could head over to YouTube, maybe it'd be better over there. I don't know. It might be an internet thing, too. Sometimes this time of day, a lot of people are on um, Facebook at the same time. I don't know. So YouTube's okay. All right. All right. So um, I'm going to try to get in two different cards tonight, but I do want to tell you about a little tiny special. It's, a, it's just a one product special and we decided to run it tonight and run it all the way through Friday. Um, it may even be more than Friday, maybe the weekend. I'll have to ask Sammy, but I think it goes all the way through Friday and it's a special on the stamp and die set that I'm using tonight. We decided to do this because when we were building bundles for Black Friday, we had a few extra of a couple of them. And instead of completely taking them all apart and putting them back into our regular inventory, we thought it would be kind of fun just to do a special on these. So let me show you what I'm going to use tonight, and then we'll get back to Tom in a minute. So well. yeah, we are going to get back to you. <laughs> so tonight I'm going to be using the Stay Positive Bundle. Now this is part of Hannah Drapinski's um, birthday flower set. So this is the month of July. And I know a lot of people got the birthday flowers, but this particular set, I really love how giant this flower is. So it's going to be really fun to color, especially the way I'm going to show you. And then it's got this gigantic die set that goes with it. So this stamp set is $23.95. And this die set, because of how much steel it takes to make this, um, this die set is $22.95. And this week only, we're going to do this bundle. So you're going to get the stamp set and the die set in the bundle for $20. Bucks. How's that for a deal, Tom? Whoa. Yeah, it would normally be $46.90. So you're going to save $26.90. So if you don't have this one and you think it's, you know, you're looking for something really fun to color, then pick this one up because I could color it with Copic markers and colored pencils and just emboss it and ink blend over it. So for 20 bucks, you get this whole bundle. And even if you don't think that you want it for yourself. Maybe you know somebody on your list that would love this bundle for Christmas next year. At 20 bucks, you just can't beat it, but it is limited. So I just wanted to tell you guys that up front. Okay. So now Tom, just come back and say hello. It's called Stay Positive. This stamp set is called Stay Positive. That's what we're going to do tonight. Stay positive. So Tom, it's Monday night. And we started something new last Monday night where you would provide us with some words of wisdom. A lot of people, um, you know, kind of liked my quotes and I kind of stopped doing them. I should probably bring them back. But I think maybe your quotes are even more fun for people. <laughs> 
So uh -oh. do you have a quote for everybody tonight? A uh, quote. Well, words uh, of wisdom. Word. Tom's words of wisdom. Tom's words of fake wisdom. Fake wisdom. <laughs> well, I, I guess um, one comes to mind, and I'll have to go to your parents uh, again for, for their wisdom that they handed down to us. Um, okay. So... Um, so there are some people, <laughs> there are some people who bring joy wherever they go. And there are some people who bring joy whenever they go. <laughs> <laughs> Turn up your mic, Tom. <laughs> Did they hear that? <laughs> I turned up the mic. Oh, okay. Somebody said, turn up your mic, Tom. We can't hear oh, you. Oh, really? You can't yeah. hear me. <laughs> no. Oh. oh, gosh. Well, a lot of people um, a lot of people heard it because a lot of people are laughing in the comments. <laughs> Fake wisdom. Fake wisdom by Tom. All right. So if you're looking for that bundle, it's in the category on our website called Kits and Bundles. That's where you'll find it. It's not in the regular stamp set category. It's under Kits and Bundles. Oh, Elizabeth, he said, some people bring joy where, wherever they go and others bring joy whenever they go. <laughs> That's Tom's words of wisdom. <laughs> so do you have a word of the day, Tom? Oh, wow. You're really... Ah, we'll do the word really of the day later. Yeah. Let's get on to crafting. <laughs> okay. So for this, for this technique, I'm going to use the biggest flower here. And I'm going to cut it out with this die. So they don't need a code for the uh, bundle. No, you go to you go to kits and bundles, and it's in that category. It's already marked down to twenty bucks for the whole bundle. There's no code. Just go right to kits and bundles. Okay. So I'm going to use my misty for this, and I'm going to actually stamp this on colored ca cardstock. So this is my first little trick here. Instead of coloring it on white because that requires a lot more coloring. I'm going to stamp it right onto colored cardstock and then I'm going to add more colors with the Copic markers. Okay, and I think I'm gonna stamp two of them and if we have enough time, I'll color them both because it is a really easy coloring technique. Okay, so for the ink that I'm going to use, I am going to use some black onyx ink. Now our black onyx ink works with Copic markers, and it works with uh, colored pencils and Gamsol. It does not work with watercolor. So if you want one ink that does it all, then you're going to want to get our amalgam ink. Let me get the amalgam. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Yes. So this is what the amalgam ink looks like. See, the cover is different. It's got this little nuclear thing. I don't know what that is, but that this is the amalgam ink. The amalgam ink can be used for Copic markers, for watercolor, and for colored pencils and Gamsol. I'm going to use dye ink tonight because this works with Copics and colored pencils and Gamsol. The reason why I'm not using amalgam and I don't use it a lot in my videos is because it takes a minute or two to dry or you have to heat set it. And I don't always have time to do that on my um, on my videos. So we're just going to get right into it. Now, the colored cardstock that I'm using is the Gina K Designs Sea Glass cardstock. So I'm going to stamp one of these with sea glass. And because this is a big stamp, I am going to use my Chucky tool. Okay. And I'm going to give it one more layer of ink just to get it really dark. The amalgam black ink is a little darker than our black onyx ink. Okay, so that's a pretty good stamping there. Now I'm gonna also stamp one in bubblegum pink because I got a bunch of requests. I saw in our Facebook group, a bunch of people were saying, can you do a Valentine's Day card? And we have Valentine's stamps and things coming next week on Monday is our brand new release. And we've got some great sets for love and friendship and Valentine's Day. But you know us, we always do our stamp sets. So even if it's for Valentine's Day, you can use it for other things. But I thought maybe one I would do as a love card. So I thought I'd do one in pink. So I don't know why it's blurry or weird tonight for some of you. 
I don't know what's going on. There are storms all over the country. I guess a lot of you know that, right? So they might be affecting some of the uh, internet. Mercury in retrograde. Oh, Mercury's in retrograde. That's right. Forgot about that. Okay. So now I have one in sea glass and one in bubble gum. All righty. Now let's clean this off. I know my Misty's really clean. I just cleaned it before you guys, um, <laughs> before you guys got here. And the way I clean my Misty, I always get so much ink on it. I use some of the Gina K design stamp cleaner and I spritz it all over everything. And then I wipe it all down. And then I go back over it with a little bit of Windex and it's pretty clean. I didn't do this side though, but you certainly can do this side with the stamp cleaner. If you have the original Misty from way back when it first came out, like a million years ago, then I wouldn't use the stamp cleaner on the grid because the grid was actually painted on. Her new grids, well, they've been like this for years. They're, they're laser etched, so you can't damage them. But the very first Misty's that came out, if your lines are pink, that's how you know that you have an original. If your lines are etched, then you have, they look a little bit gray or just clear, then you have the newer model. Okay, so now that that is done, let's start with this one. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Hopefully you guys can see. All right. So what I like to do when, whenever I'm coloring on colored cardstock, I do like to have a little scrap piece of colored cardstock of the same color. And I like to try a couple different Copic marker colors to see which ones really look good. I know that the Copic marker lids are pretty good, but they're not perfect. And sometimes you'll do the color and it won't look anything like the lid. So I like to try it first. Now, I did see a couple people when I posted that this video was going to happen tonight say to me, I don't know what uh, Copic markers to buy. There's three different kinds and I don't know which ones to buy. So there are three different ones. This is a Copic original marker. It's square. Okay, so it's this is the original markers. This is the way they first came out. And then there are two other kinds. This is a sketch marker. This one is shaped like an oval. And this is a chow marker. And this one is a round barrel. Now, they're all very good. So any Copic marker that you have is going to be a great marker. They're super high quality, really blendable, and give you beautiful color. But there's a few differences that you should be aware of. The first one is the original markers. The square ones have two different ends. They've got a pointed end, almost like a pen, you know, where you can do super skinny lines. And then they've got a chisel end like this, where you can do broad lines like that. Okay. I really liked these and I bought some of these because a lot of the stamps, when I color, I like to do really small areas and I like these little tiny nibs. It's a bullet tip, right? Thank you, Kay. A bullet tip. So I, I do have a few of these in certain colors, but this one, the sketch marker, let's see, this one has a brush tip. So it's got a wide tip for doing kind of strokes like that. And then it's also got the chisel end. Okay. Now this marker, these markers are refillable. So they're all refillable. You can refill this one, you can refill this one, and you can refill this one. Now, this one, the chow marker, is exactly the same marker as the sketch marker. Exactly. And the big difference is the shape of the barrel and how much ink is in the pen. Okay? So, if you are uncomfortable holding an oval marker, or if you feel priced out of the Copic markers because this one is very expensive then you may want to go with the sketch marker. It's a great introductory marker. It has that same brush tip and it has the chisel on the other end, just like the sketch. These markers have replacement nibs that you can buy. So you can buy kind of a bullet type nib that you can replace in here. 
Um, but the sketch markers seem to be the most popular ones. Yeah, I know it sold out really fast. Sorry, guys. Um, we're going to do more of these kind of specials, though. I promise you, we're going to do more of them. And I will let you know. Um, maybe we'll do another one tomorrow. I won't do a video on it, but I'll do another bundle tomorrow. Okay, so stay tuned for that. I'll put something um, in the Facebook group for you guys. So check out on the Facebook group if you have some time. Yeah, the bundle was on sale all the way since November. Um, but, you know, it is a really good deal. Um, but we'll do more good deals, I promise. Okay, so those are the three kinds of Copic markers. Now, Copic markers are alcohol markers, which means that you can color with them and then you can color other colors over them and where you overlap will actually blend together almost like blending brush ink. It gets very airbrushed looking. Yes, this set is still available as a single set and a single die set. So if you decide that, you know, you, you have to have just the stamp set, you don't care about the dies, um, you can get that as well. So sketch markers bleed. You When you say bleed out, Debbie, do you mean like when you open the end and a big glop comes out? Why does it do that? Um, the reason it does that is because of pressure. So if you open your Copic marker and you start to color and the ink is just getting gloppy and coming out, the way to fix that is to open the other end and just let it sit for a few minutes and they will, it, the pressure will equalize inside the marker and then it will stop doing that. Uh, if you're talking about why does it bleed outside of the lines? Well, if you're using a very porous paper, the paper is going to suck in the ink and it's going to drag it past the line. So what I recommend is coloring just close to the line, but not going right up to the line and it will kind of bleed to the line. Okay. Now, again, I'm not a Copic marker specialist. I've just learned a lot. I did take the Copic marker training and I got the little thing that says I'm a Copic marker certified instructor, but I'm not a Copic certified marker instructor. So I just want to <laughs> make that clear. Um, I know a little bit. I know just enough to get in trouble. So let's color this one first. But there's a little bit of tips and tricks. And really, the, the big difference between the markers is not the ink. It's all the same ink. It's the nibs or it is the... Um, it's the nibs or it's how much ink is in the marker. So that's a personal taste, whichever one you prefer. I would say if I was just starting out and I didn't know if I was even going to like them, I'd get a handful of the sketch markers to try them just to, you know, because then you're not spending a lot of money. Um, I mix and match my sketch and my um, chow. I'm sorry, the chow markers, these skinny ones, because they're about two dollars cheaper per per marker. But if you're pretty sure you want to invest in them, sketch markers are the most popular. So you're going to get the most instruction out there on the Internet. Um if you like that fine tip and you have a lot of small images, let's say you have a lot of images from Lawn Fawn, they have the little kind of cute little animals, or you like to color little tiny flowers. We've got little images too, like the images from the Huga set. Um, then these are really nice. And maybe just a few in these that are your favorite yep. go-to colors. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna test three colors. I, I just grabbed these. This is BG45. So I'm gonna color a little bit of that on there. That's BG45. Then I'm gonna color BG72. And remember guys, you don't have to go out and buy this stamp set to make this card. You've got big stamps in your collection. So don't feel like you can't make this card if you didn't get that stamp set. There's just look in your collection. I know you guys have stamps in your collection that you could color. I know you do. You've got a whole stamp room full of them or a whole drawer full of them. And then this last one is BG75. So, okay, so I think this is going to be three good colors for my project. And this seems to be the lightest, and that's a medium one and then a dark one. Rachel, you can do this same technique with your Spectrum Noir. Um alcohol markers. I don't know a whole lot about them. I've done a little bit with them, but I, I know a little bit more about Copic. I know a little bit more just to be dangerous, right? So now I, I stamped this on the blue cardstock, so I don't have to worry about, you know, coloring the whole thing in with a color. 
I am really only going to color from where the flower comes out of the base and then out toward the edge. Okay. So just going to give it a little bit of, see what I'm doing here? I'm just flicking the brush. That's it. Just a little light flick of the brush. I'm not worried about any kind of fancy blending. And this color is really light. So you see, it's going to almost fade in to the flower itself. I'm not worried about the ends. I want them to stay lighter. And I'm turning my card as I go. Rather than trying to be a gymnast, which I'm not, it's easier just to turn the card as I go because the circle, the flower is kind of circular. You know, it's just opening. So it's easier for me to do this like this. And even if I go a little bit outside the lines, I don't care. It's not that big of a deal. You're going to cut this flower out with the die, or you can fussy cut it because it's a huge flower and it's so easy to cut out. So if you have this set and you're thinking, oh, I have that, but I didn't get the die, it'll just take a few more minutes for you to, to cut it. Okay. I'm just going to get this a little near. Now for in here, I'm not going to worry about, again, all these Copic marker specialists. They're going to go in there and they're going to, you know, color every little line. Not me. I'm just going to just kind of color it in there and not worry about it. Okay, so that's my first layer. Now my second layer, I'm going to go to this darker one. And I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm not going to go up quite as high. I'm just going to add a little bit in there. So I'm still getting some shading. But you can start to see now how it's starting to look more, I don't know, you get more depth. It feels like there's more going on in this flower. Oh, there's lines. There's, there's a few lines in there. But I want the lines. See how... Let me, I don't know if I can get any closer, but do you see how it's got those little fleck lines, those just little whoosh, whoosh lines? I want that in there a little bit because that gives the flower some texture. And you can practice this before you actually start to color. Just take a piece of scrap paper and take your marker and just practice just flicking the brush like that. I'm going to get in here a little bit more. And I know I'm coloring over the stamen. I learned that's the word for the antennas of the flower. <laughs> somebody told me what. I shouldn't call them antennas because they're not. Um, so they're called stamen. <laughs> I'm so bad at the gardening and everything. <laughs> I can grow things. I just don't know what anything's called. Okay, so now I'm going to go, I'm going to actually highlight those stamen with a white gel pen. If I can find my white gel pen, it's around here somewhere. Oh, here it is. I'm going to accent them. Okay, and now I'm going to go with this darkest color. And now my little flick of the brush is going to be really close. But you're going to flick a little bit better if you've got either a sketch marker or a chow marker. It's a little bit harder with the original marker because that bullet tip makes this action just a little bit harder, but you can do it. It's funny because um, a lot of artists like that don't make cards actually prefer those original ones with the bullet tip and they can get beautiful shading. Um, 
I know my daughter really liked them, Alicia, and she's, you know, she's a trained artist and she liked them. But for me, you know, I am not a trained artist, so I like the tools to do some of the work for me and the shape of this brush actually makes it easier to get this motion. And you can see I'm not like going back and forth over things and trying to get it all to blend. I'm just creating a lot of really pretty texture in there. So again, for those of you that are just joining us, I'm not teaching how to color with Copic markers. I'm teaching you a way to color with Copic markers. And it's a fun way. But I don't want anybody to be under the impression that this is the only way. Okay, and again, I'm gonna just add a little bit in here just to darken that up in the center. Okay, that's it. That is it. I am def I am using Copic marker BG75. That was my last color. BG45 and BG72. And I will put these colors in the description on um, on YouTube. Okay. I always put things on YouTube. And what's the best way to store? Copic markers? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, I store mine in a, if you want to do the front camera for a second, Tom, I don't know if they can see this, but I store mine right here like this. This is um, a unit that I got at Stampin' Storage and it's got these little slots and I just try to do them in rainbow order. They're kind of a mess. Um, but that's the way I store them. They say laying down is good, but other people store them upright in like, uh, like rolling carts and stuff, and they're fine. I don't really think it makes a difference. Okay. All right, so let's go back to the pink. Let's color the pink flower. So um, I don't know what colors I'm going to do with this one yet. Let's see what we got here. So this one is R85. That's a pretty color. I like to give it a chance to dry because they do lighten up a little bit. And this is RV34. That is very close to the first one. I think I'll stick with this first one. This is RV06. And I know they say that, whoa, that is very pink and fluorescent. I don't want that. Um, RV55, they say they're in numerical order and they get darker as you go. I don't know that that's true. Because, yeah, maybe it is true. Again, <laughs> I don't have all the facts here. This is RV19. So this is 19 and this is 85. So that doesn't seem darker than that. It's probably a tonal thing, but again, I don't, like I said, I don't really understand all of that. So um, let's see. Let's start, let's start with this one. We're gonna start with RV55 and we'll just add some of that in there. Doing my little flick. I know I talked a lot tonight. I don't know if any of it is useful, but some of it might be. So and I'm taking this one, you know, the farthest out on the pedal. You start to get in a groove and you're, you start to feel like, oh, this is kind of looking good. So if anything, just pick a bigger flower from your collection tonight and just stamp it and just practice. It doesn't have to be turned into a card. It can just be practice. And you can even practice on plain white cardstock. You don't have to mess up any of your colored cardstock until you feel a little bit more confident with with the motion. And you can see how that color, when I start coloring it, it seems a lot brighter. And then once it starts to dry, it kind of lightens up a bit. That's why I like to kind of get a feel for the colors beforehand. So I think 
That was RV55. Let's see this one again. That's a little darker. This is R85. So this isn't even a V. And yes, I know some people will tell you that you should stay in the same number. Like RV means red violet. And R just means red and V just means violet. But I think you can mix. I don't think it's a problem. I kind of like it. And if you guys follow my friend Kathy Rakusen, she is an amazing Copic coloring artist. Her YouTube channel, you'll learn a lot about Copic markers from her. But one of the things that she does, she teaches um, that you can mix any markers together. You can blend anything together. And when she does her coloring road trips, and she teaches in person, she lets the people in the class pick colors that they wanna see her try to blend. And these people are picking like yellow and purple and colors that we all know doesn't work on the color wheel. And somehow she gets them to blend. And she just says the Copic markers are just such wonderful blendable markers that you can blend any colors. So don't worry about the numbers, Just she calls it color plucking. And that's Kathy Rakusen if you're looking for somebody really wonderful to follow for Copic marker learning. I like the way she teaches because she teaches with the idea that, yeah, there's lots of rules. Let's get together and break them because it's fun, you know? Okay, and I'm going to go with a little bit of this RV19. That's this real dark color and I'm going to just add a little bit of that close to the inside. Kind of like the way this one looks. You spell her last name R-A-C-O-O-S-I-N. Rakusin. And she's the one that also does that every once in a while, she'll have her 30 day coloring challenge. I really like the way this one's coming out because the colors are so bold that you can see the stroke marks and it really kind of fluffs up the flower. She is a beautiful soul, you're right. Kathy is a beautiful soul. So these big flowers are fun to color. You don't have to be that good to color them because they're just, you know, super, it's a super big canvas. And then as these lighten up a little bit as they dry, they might look just a little different. Okay, get a little bit of that dark stuff in here. Okay, so is that kind of pretty? It's just, I mean, it's not very hard work, but you get all that cool kind of texture in there. All right. So now let's cut them out. I'm going to group these together. These are the ones that I use so I can put them on YouTube so you know the colors I used. Oh, and imagine like trying it with oranges. And Kathy's last name is Rakusen. I hear everybody asking. R-A-C-O-O. -O. If you want to find our YouTube channel, I'll tell you what to look for. Look for the daily marker. Like daily, like every day, daily, D-A-I-L-Y, the daily marker. I think that's what her YouTube channel is called. So I'm going to cut this out using this jumbo die. Yeah, I'm going to put the white highlights on afterwards because I don't know how um, easy uh, it's going to dry, like how quickly it's going to dry. But see what I love about that is that you don't get any white edges, right? That's why I like starting with a color. It's really fun. Oh, my goodness. 1.30 a.m. in the U.K., you dedicated lovely soul. Thank you for joining us. Okay. All right. You're all so wonderful. I'm so blessed to have you all here. I really am. Oh, yes, this flower will make a great partial die cut card for sure. 
perfect flap. Okay, so there's my pink one and there's my blue one. And isn't that fun? I mean, just a simple, simple way to color, not fancy. I know a lot of the Copic artists out there will just blah when they see it, but I like it. <laughs> and it's my card, right? So I got to do it my way. Okay, so now I'm going to get this gel pen. The gel pen I use, I know it looks like it's Japanese writing, and that's because it is, but this is a Uniball Signo gel pen. Tom, can you type that in? and just let them know what kind of gel pen. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm just coloring the little stamen here, just adding some white details. And there are places where I don't even know if it's stamen, but I don't even care. I'm just adding them wherever I want. So it's Uniball Signo. Okay, so you can see the little white parts there. And then if you want, you can go back and you can even add a little bit of white to different parts of the petal if you want, just kind of around the edges a little bit. Uniball. Uniball. Signo. S-I-G-N-O. And that's it? Uh, gel pen. That's the one that I use. I find it's the brightest white. I've had this one for a really long time. It doesn't really clog very much. And I'm adding just a little bit of white kind of along these lines. It's drying pretty quick, actually. Just add a little bit more in here. Here. We have those pens? No, we do not. You can get them at most of your craft stores, the big box stores. Um, okay, so you can see there just that little bit of white. Yeah, they, they make them in white and gold too. And then once it dries, if you want to add a second layer, it'll get even a little bit brighter white. I'm going to do the same on this one. I just like having that little bit of white on there. I am going to have to get a new one, though, because mine is starting to run out of ink. Now, if you have a white gel pen and it's not working, one thing that you can do is just run the tip over hot water. I mean, under hot water. And sometimes that will help just break away that whatever dried up white is on there, preventing the, um, the ink from flowing. But another thing that always helps me is to get a rougher cardstock or even a paper towel. Like don't use our super smooth white cardstock, but something that has a little bit more tooth, maybe the craft and get the ball rolling, <laughs> literally get the ball rolling and get, gets it started. We'll just do this and then we'll make our card. I like this pink one. I didn't think I'd like it as much as I do. I do like pink sometimes, but I'm not as much of a pink person as I am a blue person. So I tend to always make my cards in blue. I bet you didn't know that, right? <laughs> Everything I have is aqua and turquoise. The pink is nice. And just these little white accents. It doesn't even matter where they are, you know, just it just kind of brightens it up a little bit. Just do a little bit here. white paint. My pen's starting to run out, so I'm going to have to give up. 
Okay. You can see my ink though. It's going down. It's getting there. It's, I have more. Okay. So there's my flowers. And now let's turn these into some very simple cards. Okay. Um, that particular bundle, we're probably not going to bring back because we probably don't have much of it left. Um, but I'll do some other bundles. And we've got other bundles of flowers and big die sets and stuff. This one, oh gosh, I don't know because it's um, it's in it's in Japanese. I don't know. It says 1.0 mm, so it's a thick one. Okay. So now what I did was I cut a couple of our die plates. I cut the basket weave one and the heart one. Okay. And let me get, let me get this here back in the scene. So what I'm going to do is I want to be able to see these. I like having this like this. I, I like the white on white look, but sometimes it's a little hard to see. So what I think I'm going to do is I have some bubblegum ink here. And I have a brush. Oh, it's not big. 1.0. Thank you, Kay. One millimeter. Yeah. But some of them are like 0.07 and 0.05. So I feel like white might be a little bit thicker, but maybe not. Maybe not. Math is not my forte because while other kids were doing math, I was eating paint. Okay. So now I'm going to take this bubblegum pink and I'm just going to very lightly dust a little pink over this white. Now I could just put that die plate, that cut out die right over a piece of pink cardstock, but that would be really bold and I don't want it to be so bold. I just want a nice little, I don't know, a little fluff of color behind there. Just a mist of color. But by using the same color ink as the cardstock, the tones are gonna be the same. So it's not like I'm using innocent pink, which is a more peachy pink and bubblegum pink for the flower. Okay, and I didn't even blend it all that well. Um, I just did a real light mist. It almost looks cloudy because there's some white spots. But then when I put this on top, now you can see the hearts a little bit better, right? It's just a little bit, um, a little bit nicer. Okay, and I'm gonna trim it down before I mount it together. Okay, then I'm gonna do the same thing with this one with some sea glass. Okay, just don't go anywhere. Just stay in the group so that if people have questions with numbers and stuff, <laughs> you're there to answer. All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Very light mist of color over this. I don't want it to be dark, but I want it to be in the same family. Okay. All right, good enough. So I'm going to use this one for the basket just to have that mist of color. <laughs> yes, I was eating paste <laughs> and paint, <laughs> the acrylic paint. All right, so I'm going to just trim this down. This one actually looks like it fits pretty well, but I'm going to make it just a hair smaller because I don't want it to peek out the sides. Okay. That should be pretty good. That looks good. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Just a hair off the edge. I could go a little smaller with this one because those hearts are tucked in there a little bit more. I think I'll go even a little smaller on this one. I don't want to struggle. Okay. There we go. Okay. Nice little mist of color back there. Now we're going to cut out two more dies. We're going to cut out the, um, I'm going to use a different hello die because I know 
the other one is in a bundle. So do I have it here somewhere? I don't know if I do. Oh, I do. I'm going to use this Hello die. And then this is from A Little Love. You guys want me to do Valentine's Day, so I'm just going to do love. So hello and love. And I'm going to cut those out using some black cardstock. Yeah, I think it just helps you see it a little bit more by adding that faint mist of color. Definitely a lot different than a big drastic amount. So these are going to be my panels that are going to go behind these. Let me show you what I mean. See how that's going to go behind that. So I'm going to actually cut my word right out of the middle of this. You won't see it because I only need the edge. So I'm cutting this out of the middle of my layering panel. Okay. So there it is. I'll pop this out using my Tim Holtz craft pick. <laughs> now remember guys, we have a new release coming um, Monday night. So we have a new kit and I'm very excited about the kit. I think you're going to like the kit and we've got some amazing new sets by our illustrators. So if you missed out tonight, don't, don't feel bad. There are some amazing things that are coming. Okay. So I got the love. I love this love. Isn't that love pretty? So much love. Okay, and then this panel I'm going to keep, even though it has a hole in it. I'm going to do the same thing with the hello. <laughs> now, these kinds of flowers are excellent to color when you don't know what else to do, you know? You just cut out a bunch of them or just stamp a bunch of them and sit and... Take your Copic markers and flick color. Here's my leftover bit. Poke this out. So, Tom. Yes. Do you have a word for us today? A not word? A wrong word? A fake word? A fake word of the day. Fake word of the day. Tom well, has been... There's the hello. I like this hello. It's pretty... Let's see. I think there was a good one that we may have mentioned earlier on a live, but it bears repeating. Kind of oh, like, yeah? Kind of like the rice and beans I had for, for dinner. Um, <laughs> so, okay. We're, Make sure your mic's loud enough because nobody should be missing anything so, you're saying. <laughs> so we're really missing our bikes these days. Oh, it, it gets, my gosh. Yes. You can bike in the cold, but when the snow starts to uh, fall up here, it gets icy and it gets really dangerous. So we're really missing our bicycles, but I think we're going to ride them around in the warehouse uh, one of these days, aren't we? Yes, we are. You brought them over, didn't you? Yeah, I did. So when everybody goes home from work, you and I will just ride around the warehouse. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, I was thinking about how we were out. You should get your summer. face in so people can see you. This summer we were out riding around and they were working on the roads. And you know how they strip the top layer off and it's really, really rough to, to ride on. And so if you're on a bicycle and you're riding on roads like that, those would be hammer roads. <laughs> Hemorrhoids, <laughs> the fake word of the day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> back to card making. <laughs> so, what I did was I just used a little bit of tape. And I know you saw me tape right over that. The tape won't stick where the holes are, right? And then I mounted that onto that piece that I did that light blending. And I'm going to mount the <laughs> hemorrhoids onto this bubblegum pink card base. <laughs> oh, I love it. Man, we did ride on some hemorrhoids now that you say it. All the potholes in the spring from the cold weather. 
Okay, so there's my first card base. Yeah, I asked Tom for a word of the day, a wrong word of the day. <laughs> and he never fails to disappoint. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do the same thing again with the basket weave. I am going to just run my, you could use glue too if you want, but this won't, you know, where the holes are, the tape just doesn't go. And then I'm going to go right on top of that. There we go. And now this whole thing is going to go onto my sea glass. It is a dad joke. You're right. <laughs> I know the pink is so pretty. The pink wasn't even my intention to do, but I thought I should do one because people were asking for like a Valentine's style card. And I thought that would be nice for that. Okay. So there we go. Now I got some tape on here. So let's move this out of the way. I'll get a fresh piece and just lay it here so the contrast is a little better. Okay, so real simple layout. I'm just going to put this flower right at the top. And then I'm just going to put the word right at the bottom. Just like that. That's my one card. And my other card, same thing. Flower at the top. I have a little black right in there. <laughs> and then, <gasps> I didn't do black on this, you're right. Oh my gosh, no, I gotta do the black. I gotta do the black, thank you, thank you. See, I can't even make cards without you guys. Seriously, gotta do the black. That's what this whole thing is about, that little pop of black. Now you're gonna see the big difference. I know some of you are like, oh my gosh, I love it with no black. Well, there we go. Okay. Now, I did forget the black. You're right. Okay. So thank you for screaming. I appreciate it. And then this love will just go right on top, just like this. And you could do anything you want with the love. So you could put the word love and then you could stamp a little you, like the word you. Or you can use from this, this is from the A Little Love Bundle. You can just do you with all my heart on a little piece of cardstock going across the bottom there. So I'll add something like that and then I'll maybe, or you can just do love. And then inside you can stamp you with all my heart. I like that. Is that fun? Okay, so those are my cards. So now, Tom, we've got to give away two cards tonight. I'm going to put these together while you do that. I'm just going to put a little tape on the back of this. We're going to give these away. I like it to go a little outside, too. And then I'll put this on with some Connect glue. I've got this Connect glue, this big Connect glue is in this little fine tip bottle. And then I found that if I wrap this around here and I just pull this over like that, it keeps it out of the way. So let me move this up here and we'll get these tiny little dots of glue. On here. So somebody asked for a sneak peek of something new coming. Could I give one sneak peek? So I will. I'll give one sneak peek of something new that I am so excited about that's coming next Monday. You guys. Question, how do you get the glue in the smaller bottles? Um, you just open this bottle. So these, these come like this in a little three pack and you just open the bottle and you just squeeze this right into the bottle until, you know, you've got enough in there. There we go. There's that card. Okay. 
And we'll do the same thing for this one. Yeah, because these just unscrew. So it's a pretty wide opening and then you can just fit that right in there. And I use the, the two ounce glue and this is, fits about a half ounce. So you can refill this bottle all the way up four times from the big bottle. I, have, I haven't refilled mine yet from the very first night that I did it. And I use it a lot because I use a lot of sequins and stuff. Get that on there. And then we'll do the same thing. But what I love about this is you can get the tiniest, tiniest little dots out of here. See how tiny those dots are? Can they see that, Tom? Yes. Yeah, they are so tiny. And you can do other things with these bottles too. You can put paint in them. You can put reinkers in them. You can mix reinker with alcohol and kind of make an alcohol type ink that you can play with. Um, you know, you can mix colors of reinkers together to get new colors. So if you have a green, but you want it to have a little bit more blue in it, you could mix a little blue into it and then squeeze it out onto a paper towel and use it like a ink pad or color with it. So lots of ways. I'm going to move the love over just a little bit more toward the center. And then because this is so flexible, I'm just going to push that up a little bit like that. Card size? These are A2 cards. So they measure four and a quarter by five and a half. So they're my finished cards. What do you think, guys? You like them? <laughs> Spectacular. Okay, and now I'm going to show you the little sneak peek of what's coming. All right, so you guys know I love our disco ball sequins, right? I love disco ball sequins. I use them all the time. Um, well, we have something called Aurora rhinestones, and they're super tiny. And this is what they look like. Aren't they gorgeous? They look like they're so crystal clear. They look like glass. And so these are coming, our newest embellishment. And they're, some of them are really tiny. See how tiny they are? Just the perfect, oh, sorry. Is that in the way? Can you see that there? See how tiny they are? They're just like the perfect size for cards. So these are coming on Monday. And we have another sequin style coming, another sequin color coming on Monday too, by special request by my uh, good friend, Karen Hightower. She requested these. She was really looking for something like this and we did it. So I can't wait to show you all the new stuff coming on Monday. Okay, so here we go. Let's start with the blue card, Tom. We're going to give away this blue card to somebody. Drum roll, please. The blue card is going to... Jennifer Burwanger. Yay, Jennifer. Jennifer. Congratulations, Jennifer. Yay. All right, Jennifer, this is coming your way. Okay. Now the pink love card. That could be a Valentine's Day card. You could put a Valentine's greeting inside. You know, happy Valentine's Day or whatever you want in there. Pink love card. The or pink. as John Bon Jovi would say, love. Goes to Peggy Monahan. Peggy! Yay, Peggy! Congratulations. All right. Well, Peggy and Jennifer, all you have to do is send your name and address and whether you won the blue flower or the pink flower card and uh, send that to customer service at info at GinaKDesigns.com and we will get those right out to you. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little Copic marker technique thing that I did tonight. <laughs> hey, it was fun, right? And uh, don't worry, you've got lots of flowers in your collection that you can try this on. Um, again, I will put the Copic marker colors that I used in the description on YouTube under the video. And these videos live on YouTube forever. So you can always go back. I always put the ink colors, what stamps I used, what dyes I used. So it's a good reference over there. All right, everybody. Well, we will be back on Wednesday, lunchtime live, a crafternoon live. 
right, Tom? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. One of those words. And uh, then I'll be back later on in, toward the end of the week with another five-minute card video. Until then, hey, you guys, stay warm. I know it's cold and you guys got a lot of snow out there. Stay warm and safe. Stay healthy. We love you all so very much. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.